How's it going guys? My name's Jason Miller. If I were to ask you what is the most illegally trafficked wild mammal on the planet, you might expect it to be one of the animals that gets more frequent media attention like tigers or rhinos or elephants. But in fact, the title holder is an animal that most people haven't even heard of, the pangolin. You probably already knew that because you saw the title of this video, but what is a pangolin? Why are they endangered? And most importantly, why should we care? We'll answer all of these questions and more in today's episode of Conserving Hope. Pangolins are truly one of the most unique animals on the planet, so much so in fact that they have no close relatives that I could compare them to. They're comprised of eight species within three different genera, all belonging to the family Manidae, which is the sole family in the order Folidota. Four species are found in Africa, while the other four reside in Asia. Some are most at home in the trees, while others prefer a more terrestrial lifestyle. They range in size from the 5-pound long-tail pangolin to the 75-pound giant pangolin. Another common name for the pangolin is the scaly anteater, even though whales and giraffes are more closely related to one another than pangolins and anteaters are. Although they aren't anteaters, they are anteaters, with almost 100% of their diet consisting of ants and termites, occasionally supplemented with other insect species. Pangolins have very poor eyesight, relying mostly on smell to find food. Once a potential meal is located, they use their long, curved front claws to excavate tunnels, as well as strip bark from logs and trees to get access to ant and termite colonies. This is where it gets interesting. The pangolin's tongue is very thin and muscular, retracting into a sheath within its chest cavity, and the muscles connected to the tongue attach to the base of the sternum. In some species, the tongue is the same length or longer than the pangolin's body. It's coated in a layer of sticky saliva, which it uses to probe insect tunnels and retrieve its food. But the weirdness doesn't stop there. Pangolins lack teeth and have extremely weak jaws, which makes the whole digestion thing a bit challenging. Instead of politely chewing, pangolins ingest small rocks, which stay in their stomach and grind their food similar to a bird's gizzard. Their stomach is also thickened, muscular, and partially lined with spines to assist in digestion, creating what is, for all intents and purposes, ant hell. Now, as I mentioned earlier, pangolins are found in Asia and Africa, which means that they share habitat with some pretty formidable predators, and running away from a leopard on those nubby little hind legs isn't super effective. Thankfully, the pangolin comes with an impressive arsenal of defense mechanisms. The word pangolin comes from the Malayan word pangulung, which translate to roller, or one who rolls up. And when a pangolin comes face to face with an attacker, that's exactly what they do. Their head, back, limbs, and tail are covered in large plated scales made of keratin, the same substance found in hair and fingernails. When the pangolin is attacked, it quickly rolls itself into a ball, exposing only its armor plating and protecting its soft underbelly. The scales are so tough that even a lion's powerful jaws can't break through them. After transforming itself into a giant artichoke, some pangolins will then thrash their tail from side to side using the sharp scales to ward off any further attacks. And if the predator in question still refuses to give up, the pangolin is also a master of chemical warfare, emitting a noxious smelling chemical from its anal glands. All things considered, pangolins are not very easy prey, but there is still one species that poses a very serious threat to their continued existence. Humans. Poaching and habitat loss have resulted in four species of pangolin being listed as threatened, two species listed as endangered, and two species being listed as critically endangered. This is primarily due to the illegal harvesting of pangolins to be sold for use in traditional Chinese medicine. Traditional medicine suggests that dried pangolin scales have a number of medicinal properties, such as stimulate lactation in women, correct menstrual problems, reduce swelling, increase blood circulation, and cure cancer. However, these claims are 100% false. As I mentioned earlier, pangolin scales are made entirely of keratin, the fibrous structural protein that makes up hair, fingernails, reptile scales, claws, beaks, hooves, horns, and the outermost layer of skin. So if pangolin scales cure cancer, so should everything else that I just listed. But it doesn't, so they don't. Along with their scales, pangolin meat is also considered a delicacy in some parts of China and Africa. Although it seems to defy logic, belief, tradition, and ignorance are very powerful things, so the illegal trade of pangolin products is a reality. On November 29th, 2017, customs officials in China seized over 13 tons of pangolin scales in a shipment from the port of Shenzhen, which borders Hong Kong. This is the largest seizure of pangolin scales ever recorded with the previous record being 3.4 tons. To put this into perspective, 13 tons of pangolin scales could have come from as many as 30,000 pangolins. So yes, the pangolin situation is daunting to say the least, but daunting doesn't mean hopeless. 
Since 1975, all pangolins have been protected under Appendix 2 of CITES, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. An Appendix 2 listing is designated for species that are not necessarily threatened with extinction, but in which trade must be controlled in order to avoid utilization incompatible with their survival. Unfortunately, the slow reproductive rates and naturally low population density of pangolins makes their trade unsustainable in any form. This fact was recognized and discussed in Johannesburg, South Africa in 2016, during the 17th CITES Conference of Parties. At this conference, all eight species of pangolin were moved up to Appendix 1, offering the highest level of protection under CITES. Under Appendix 1 protection, trade in specimens of these species is permitted only in exceptional circumstances. This decision was a huge step in the fight to secure the future of these amazing and unique species, but unfortunately, just because something is made illegal doesn't mean it goes away entirely. So what can be done? How can you and I act now to secure the pangolin's future? Well, first and foremost, don't buy any products that include pangolin as an ingredient. There's a big movement right now towards the use of alternative medicines, which is fine for the most part. As long as you're not putting anybody else's health at risk, I think that it's your body and your choices. However, please read the ingredients carefully. The back of your pill bottle more than likely won't blatantly list pangolin scales, but might instead use the pharmaceutical Latin name squama manitis, or the Chinese word for pangolin, chuan zhen jia. If you see either of these ingredients listed, put the bottle down, calmly contact the store owner, and voice your complaint. Before yelling at anyone, take into consideration the fact that the person you're talking to might not know exactly what it is that they're selling. Talking to people like they're evil villains very rarely accomplishes anything. After that, contact the manufacturer and voice your concerns to them directly. Let them know that unless pangolin products are removed from their inventory, you will no longer be giving them your business. When demand for a product stops, so does the supply. So when the demand for pangolin stops, so will the poaching. Another great way to help pangolins is by donating to organizations that are working to protect them. An excellent example of this is Pangolin Conservation, a nonprofit organization based in Florida that is committed to the conservation, education, and research of the African white-bellied tree pangolins. You can visit their website, www.pangolinconservation.org, to learn more about all the amazing work that they do and donate to their cause. This shirt, along with other products, is for sale on their website as well, with all profits going directly to supporting their conservation activities. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, spread the word. Pangolins are one of the most unique and interesting animals on the planet, so starting up a conversation about them isn't that hard to do. If you're in school and you're assigned a presentation or a paper on a subject of your choice, make it about pangolins. Share pictures of pangolins on social media. See this baby pangolin? Easily worth 100 likes and retweets. Finally, share this video with everyone that you know. The more people learn about pangolins and other endangered species, the more desire there will be to protect them, and the future of our planet will be much brighter for it. Thanks for watching the first episode ever of Conserving Hope. New episodes will be uploaded the first Monday of every month only on Miller's Wildlife, so please make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and I'll be doing other series and weird random videos in the weeks in between. Let me know in the comments what endangered species or conservation issues you'd like to see me address in this show next. Also make sure to like Miller's Wildlife on Facebook and follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Miller's Wildlife. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys next time.